Welcome to this first lecture of week 13. During this week, we will explore the mechanisms and instruments that are available for the promotion of ethical conduct and professionalism in the management of public finance. An emphasis will be placed on the following point. Ethical conduct, component of the ethical environment, fundamental principles of ethics and conduct, and then finally, professionalism. Ethics has to do with right or wrong, or appropriate or inappropriate conduct or behavior. A code of con ethics is a set of rules prescribed by higher authority to specific homogeneous groups of employees with a view to eliciting specific behavior under specific context. Codes of ethics can, however, have both positive and negative aspects. Positive effect is concerned with reassuring the public that the public service and associated professional bodies have definite written rules of acceptable conduct and secondly, providing officials with guidelines in making ethical choices. Negative effect occur when the code of ethics usually prescribes how not to act doesn't say much about how to behave ethically and officials belonging to other professional bodies with their own codes of conduct may be influenced by those. The ethical environment consists of several different components, namely awareness of the law required in the field of corruption computer misuse, fraud or theft, existing of internal rules, acknowledgement of the existing of rules on register and conflict of interest, disclosure, standing orders and financial regulations, codes of conduct and finally disciplinary policy are, is required. Policies on staffing need to be put in place concerning recruitment, including references, canvassing regulations, and open promotional and reward procedures. Policies on decisions and procedures is required for transparency and accuracy of decision making, open access and communication, formal recording and instructions on expenditure and contracts. Prevention and detection plans are required for dealing with private sector contractors, effective and accessible management and fin uh, financial information systems, scrutiny or audit committees, internal or and external audit integration, fraud response and contingencies with designated and trained staff, outline and Ombudsman, public protector, awareness training and overt commit commitment of senior management. Officials in the financial management and accounting discipline have to adhere to the following fundamental principles. First, integrity. Members should be straightforward and honest in performing their duty. Objectivities, members should be fair and not to allow prejudice, bias or the influence of others to override objectivity. Professional competence and due care, members should refrain from performing any services they are not competent to carry out unless under advice and assistant, assistance ensuring services are performed satisfactorily. Confidentiality, members 
should respect confidentiality of information and not use or disclose any such information without proper and specific authority or unless a legal or professional right exists. Professional behavior a member should conduct him or herself with courtesy and consideration towards employers, third parties, other members of the profession, staff, and the public. And lastly, technical standards. A member should carry out professional services in accordance with relevant technical and professional standards. The civil service is no place for the matter. It must be staffed by men and women who are truly professional. A profession is a type of occupation that has the power to have undergone a developmental process whereby it has been able to acquire or convince significant others that it has acquired a high degree of a constellation of characteristics we have come to accept as denoting a profession. All different professions can be arranged on a continuum from non-profession on the one side to old established professions on the other. A simple dichotomy of professions and non-profession does not exist and only the degree of professionalism can be referred to. This, as indicated on the continuum, is awarded according to the various criteria which are admittance to, to the profession through training at professional tertiary institutions, attitudes of the practitioner of the profession towards the profession, including the education and group cohesion and the status of the profession as awarded by the community which a position of having power and prestige. The advantage of employing professional personnel lies in the fact that they live up to the characteristics of their professions in their daily activities. A professional personnel group can impress upon managerial and administrative staff the vital need for training for the rendering of services and enhancing their own status.